Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Well, this particular video actually was recorded in 2017 and not getting posted to 2024. And what I'm going to show you today is how to build a gate and put the posts in and keep them solid and make all that tie together. And the good news is I can show you the finished product and how seven years later it's still working because there's a right and a wrong way to build fence. And if you don't know it, if you didn't grow up with my dad who taught me the right way, you may do it wrong and have to redo it later. So let's get started. Well, first a little backstory about why I had to put a gate in here. The property over here is 10 acres that my wife and I bought probably 10 years ago. And then right after we bought it, we wanted to put a house in right here. And there's a beautiful view over a valley right, right here. And, and if we put a house in, it would be somewhere on the south side of this property. The property I'm standing on was owned by a farmer and he, he put up hay here. And we said, if he ever decides to sell it, we probably ought to buy that because if anybody bought it and put a house in here, they'd put it right where we'd put our house in and we'd be back to back. It'd probably block our view. Well, we didn't think he'd ever sell it, but two years after we bought the place over here, he sold this place. And we're like, ah, oh, don't want to buy it. Don't want to go into any more debt, but we went ahead and did pull the trigger on it anyway because it was too good to let go. And I'm glad we did because property values have gone up. It was a good investment. Land almost always is. But there was a problem. The 10 acres here was accessed by the county road to the north with an easement. It's actually landlocked here, but an easement went down to the county road north of here. And this property was accessed to the county road south of here. They didn't connect. They'd never been owned by the same person. So in order to get from that property right there to here with a tractor, you had to go out and around the county roads and come in. It was like two miles. It was like a 30 minute drive to get from right there to right here. So of course we wanted to put a gate in. When we bought this place, one nice thing was down in the bottom was a power pole that the electric company had replaced and they left it laying, the old one when they replaced it with new ones. And a lot of times farmers will tell the electric company, if you ever replace the power poles on my place, just leave the old one because they make great corner posts and gate posts. And so they did, and that's what I made this out of. If you have a power post, usually they'll rot off at the bottom. They don't rot off at the top and they're treated all the way up. So you've got a, a post that's, uh, if you cut the bottom off, too short for a power post, but perfect for corner posts. So what I did when I got the post, I cut the bottom of it off, the part that was rotten, the reason they replaced it, and I cut it into four equal pieces. Because if you're building a gate, you not only need the, the post that the gate hangs on, but a brace post. And if you're building a corner post, you need the same thing. You need a, a, the main post and a, and a brace post. Because if you just put one post in, eventually the tension of the fence will make it bend over and eventually pull it out of the ground. And there's a way to prevent that. And this is how my dad taught me to, to build fence. And I'm gonna show you that today. So when I decided to put this gate in, the first thing I did was I bought my gates and I wanted two swinging gates that swung together. And the first thing you wanna do is get your gates because an eight foot gate may not be quite eight foot. They, gate companies will put less steel in the gates and take out the part that goes, the hinge part that goes into the post. So the eight foot actually starts at the edge of the post and then the hinge and then the gate. So you, you wanna make sure, now maybe not everybody does this, but these gates were not as wide as they were advertised until you added the hinge onto it and then that made it the width they were advertised. But I have two gates together, two eight foot gates that swing together and I wanted them to meet just right in the middle, just about exactly. And so I measured the distance I needed and then I got my post hole digger. Now having a three-point post auger for your tractor is great. It saves a lot of work, but there's no down pressure on it. And when I started digging these holes, I hit almost solid rock, not that deep. And I'm like, uh-oh, I wonder if these posts will stay in the ground. Well, the nice thing about doing this video seven years later is they're still in the ground and they're still solid. So what I did is I put four holes in and then took the front end loader of the tractor with the pallet forks and lifted these heavy poles up because I'll tell you what, it's a lot of weight in them and dropped them in the holes. From experience, I'll tell you, don't put your posts in concrete. 
if you put them in concrete and there's any little dip in the concrete anywhere, it'll let water run down and the water has no place to go because it won't go through the concrete. It'll run right down the post and rot it out really quickly. So what I did is I just put the dirt back in the hole and I tamped it every step of the way. Really hit it hard, pushing it down. And what that does is that allows the water to drain down through the dirt and not rot off the post. So I put all four of my posts in. Now you've got two posts like this on one side and two posts like this on the other side. And what you've got to do is tie them together. So how you do that is you're going to put a post in between them about well, maybe two thirds of the way up and then you're going to tie that post together with wire. Now let's show you how, how you do that. First thing I did was I, I figured out where I wanted my cross post and I notched out a spot for it with a chainsaw on my big post. And you'll see Chuck, my neighbor, decided to start helping me about this time, and he comes into the picture here. And so we notched out the, a flat spot on the post so we could put this other post across. And there was a lot of measuring that had to be done here to get it exactly where we wanted. But once you've got that cross post in, you've got two posts braced by a cross post. Now, if that's all you have, that's pretty good, but you still need a little bit more to brace that together. So what you do is you take wire and you run it from the top of the main gate post to the bottom of the brace post, and then you tighten that up as, as tight as you can around the main post through the middle. And what that does is that really ties things together nicely, and there's no place that can go. And if you're doing a corner post or if you're doing a gate post, if you'll do that, that will make that last a long time. If you don't do it, eventually the tension of the wire will pull that post and make it unlevel and eventually maybe pull it out of the ground and you'll have to redo it. And I see people doing that all the time. I don't care how deep you get that post in the ground, the tension of that wire will eventually pull it. But if you put this brace post in, that is, it, it'll still try to pull it out but it minimizes it a bunch. But here you go, seven years later, it's still in the ground, still looks good, and uh, did what it was supposed to. Now I thought about cutting the top of the posts off at an angle so the rain would run off of them, and I didn't do that, and the reason I didn't, it's real hard to get an angle exactly right, and this is, if I ever build a house back here, it's gonna show, and if you get one angle a little different than the other, I thought about it, what's the chances of me being able to cut those off the same both ways so I just left them like they were now if I start getting some rot in the top I'll probably cut them off uh, you know straight down a little ways past the rot and I think I'm going to get several years of use out of these now eventually I'll have to replace them anytime you're working with wood and there's rainwater and humidity in your area like there is in mine eventually it'll rot but right now I've got me strong corner posts and uh, gates and everything tied together and looks good and uh, it's, it's been a good functioning gate and it really didn't cost me that much money. I appreciate you watching my videos. Here's a couple of others you might want to watch and here's a link to my online store with unique things for the tractor owner and a place to click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.